Hello. In the previous video, we saw that our body is actually a combination of three bodies, one covering the other. The innermost body is the causal body. The causal body houses that cosmic molecule which has been projected from the eternal and infinite cosmic ocean. And the cosmic ocean is what is popularly or simplistically or oversimplistically known as God. So we have the cosmic molecule also known as soul or spirit soul or jivatma contained in the causal body. The causal body is contained in the astral body. The astral body comprises the mind, the intelligence and ego. And the subtle body or the astral body in turn is contained within the gross body. The gross body is the body which you can see. You can see in the mirror. And this gross body is comprised of water, earth, air and fire. So these three bodies together make the body that we have. And inside this, somewhere inside this, there is space called Akash. Okay. In the previous video, we also saw that we get the body, we get the human body after we have migrated through 8.4 million species of life in the material world, in the gross world. After passing through these 8.4 million species of life, we get the human form. And again as human, we are born again and again. I mean, we take new bodies again and again. Taking a new body is what we call birth and shedding the old body is what we call death. Okay, so after reaching the human species, after evolving through so many, through 8.4 million species of life, we get the human body and as again, again as human, we evolve. Every birth as human, is a step ahead in our spiritual evolution. Now what is spiritual evolution? It is the content of cosmic energy that permeates through our astral body and the gross body. It comes from the inner cosmic molecule that's in the causal body. The amount of that cosmic energy that permeates our astral body and through the astral body that permeates our gross body is what we call consciousness. For an average person, we get about 4 to 5 percent of our consciousness as our active consciousness. And the remaining 95 to 96 percent of our cosmic energy inside us is latent. It's called, psychologists call it subconscious. Spiritual evolution is all about releasing more and more of the latent spiritual energy in us and increasing our consciousness, our active consciousness from 4 to 5 percent to 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and high. If we are able to release 10 percent of our cosmic energy, we are genius. So, we release our latent energy naturally by successive births and deaths. With each birth, we have the more spiritual energy in us. And also by yoga. But even if you don't do yoga, the same thing will happen, but it will take a longer time. We have to be born and we have to be born and we have to die several times more than you would have to if we do yoga regularly. The breathing yoga. So as I said, the average person has 4 to 5 percent of his uh, cosmic energy as active energy or active consciousness and remaining is subconscious. But as more and more of our spiritual energy is released, our material world ambitions diminish. 
As I said in my previous video, we get the body, we are born on earth with this body because this body is most suitable for us to fulfill our ambitions, our desires. If my desire in this life is to be violent, to kill people, to show my power, I might be born as a lion or a tiger in my next birth because that kind of body, a lion's body or a tiger's body or a cheetah's body will enable me to better satisfy my desire. So that when I am reborn as a human being, I will be more of a human being. I will be more human. So the whole purpose of life on earth is to move from the 8.4 million species of life to a human. From human to the humane. From humane to the more humane. And from the more humane to the angelic. And from the angelic to the divine. That is the whole journey. From the time we are projected from the cosmic ocean to the time we return to the cosmic ocean. The entire journey is the spiritual journey. So we have seen that the body we have in this life is the one that is most suitable for fulfilling our desires. And the whole purpose of life on earth is to fulfill our desires as quickly as we can and overcome our desires. As we overcome more and more of our material desires, more and more of our spiritual energy is released. And when it is released to the extent of 60%, we go to the astral planets. Then we don't need this, this body or this earth. Because this earth or this body is no longer capable or rather we don't need those bodies because we don't have any ambitions or desires that can be fulfilled by such a body or by this planet. Or we move to the higher planets, the astral planets. What are the astral planets like? What are they? Okay. In principle, they are the same as the earth. But more subtle, more refined, more by earthly standards, more surreal. What appears surreal when we are on earth is actually real on the astral planets. The astral body has three eyes. Two in the corresponding locations we have here and one is here, the third eye. Some people on earth have activated the third eye with the help of spiritual masters. Sometimes on earth when we are between sleep and wakefulness, when you are about to fall asleep, but still not fully asleep, we see some colors here, some light here, some of us. There is the third eye. We intake the spiritual energy, the spiritual vibrations that are all over the astral planets. They are also on, on the earth, but they are milder. And from where do we intake? We intake from the head, here. Even on earth, if we do yoga, I have experienced it. There is a small fan here which whirls very fast when you are in the yogic trance. In many villages, at least in India, I have seen newborn babies, mothers put an oil cloth on the top of the head to protect that part of the head. It is believed to be the opening. Even on earth, through which we receive spiritual energy, but it is more pronounced on the astral planets. The astral body with which we enter and progress in the astral world has the same senses that we have on earth with a gross body, but there it is much more subtle, much more refined. And there is one additional sense there, in addition to the five senses that we have here, an additional sense there is the sense of intuition. Also on earth we have this, some people have this uh, sense of intuition, not all, but their intuition is normal. On earth intuition is paranormal. The climate on the astral planets is eternal spring. Sometimes it snows 
and the snow has a light hue, some light colors. Sometimes it rains or drizzles. The water has color of the rainbow. The rivers, the ponds, the lakes, the lagoons, the, the oceans, they have rainbow colored content. But everything is more subtle than here. Everything is done by energetic vibrations. It's energy at play. The energy which was only up to the extent of 5 or 6 per 4 or 5 percent on earth or 10 percent maximum if you are a genius, that energy is available beyond 60 percent. So 61, 62 percent energy and above we have when we are on the astral planets. In astral planets everything is by wish. You imagine something that you want, you desire something and you get it. I desire to eat some fruit. I will have it. It will come. It will not be a fruit like here, like you get on earth. It won't be a gross fruit. It will be also in a kind of energy. I want to see how it feels to be a woman. I become a woman. I want to see how it feels to be a fish. I become a fish. We materialize and dematerialize by our wish, by our inner energy. If you want conjugal bliss, you just imagine your partner, male or female, and you have him or her. Okay. Now just as on earth, we have colonies of people. We have within a city, we have different localities. We are attracted to communities which have a similar wavelength of the vibrations, of the energy vibrations. On earth we say, I vibe well with him or I don't vibe well with him. What does it mean? On, on earth it is, it is not so clear what it means. But when you go to astral planets, we find that it means vibrations, corresponding vibrations. Vibration within a certain range is one community. And when we go there, we find People who are close to us, our friends, relatives, even enemies, neighbors, who are on the same uh, same astral planet, we meet them. So there you may meet your, I may meet my deceased mother. And when I meet her, she recognizes me. We look the same. When we go to astral planet, we have the same appearance as we have on earth. As we have on earth, as we had on earth in the prime of youth. We have the same name that we have on earth. So we recognize each other. I recognize my mother when I am in astral heaven. But when I recognize my mother, I also recognize many other people who were my mothers in my earlier lives, who were my fathers in my earlier life, who were my sisters, brothers, enemies. That is the time you learn that love is not for one person. What we are told on earth, that love is, love remains even after the person is dead. It doesn't make sense on earth. My mother loved me, now she is no more. Her love in, is in me now. When I die, I will not be here. Where will her love go? It will show, it will, it will materialize in the astral planets. If she is still on the astral planet where I go. So you learn to love everybody. You may also meet your enemies on earth. Not may, you will meet. And all you know, the former UK Prime Minister, the late Margaret Thatcher, and the former Iraqi President, Saddam Hussein, are up there on some astral planet, recalling the wars they fought, the conflicts they had on earth, and laughing it over. Margaret Thatcher might be asking Saddam Hussein, Hey, why did you capture Kuwait? And Saddam Hussein might be replying, The US ambassador told me that Kuwait is an internal issue and they have, and, and the Americans have no opinion on it. And I took them seriously and I treated Kuwait as my internal issue and then you made it a global problem. You cheated me. Margaret Thatcher might be still laughing it over. Said, well, 
But uh, where did you hide your weapons of mass destruction? Saddam might say, I, I never had any. You all sent the United Nations inspectors to, to search for the weapons of mass destruction in my country, WMDs, and it found none. And Margaret Thatcher is saying, Saddam, you are lying. You had WMDs. You used them against Iran, didn't you? Saddam might be laughing. Yes, I had. But I destroyed them before the inspectors came in. Anyway, and when the inhabitants on the astral planets joke with each other about how seriously they took life on Earth, when it's all a game, they also talk about the religion that they followed on Earth. Hey, what was your religion on Earth? They say, oh, I was a Buddhist. Oh, and you? I was a Christian. I was a Hindu. Oh, really? Okay. I converted to Islam. So I became a Muslim. It is not important. Religion is only on Earth. And that too, more and more people are moving away from it. And we realize this when we are on the astral planets. So, when we are on the astral planets, we realize that all the things that we took very seriously on Earth was not worth being taken so seriously. It was part of a game, a drama. Each of us were performing our role in the drama. Okay. Now, just as we have teachers on Earth, we have teachers even on the astral planets who teach the inhabitants there how to rise higher and higher in the astral world. Okay, two inhabitants of the astral world fight? Yes, they fight. They fight mentally. They fight by their mental vibrations. Like on Earth, the more evolved people fight by their minds, by the mental energy, writing books or articles or making speeches, not really physically fighting. So even on the astral planets, there are fights. Karma is performed even there, but all much more subtle than on earth. Nobody on the astral planet comes and kills you or stabs you. So what is this conflict that the inhabitants on the astral planets have? It is a conflict of knowledge. Your status on earth has no relevance there. How much of knowledge you have in you, knowledge about what kind of life awaits us in the higher astral planets and in the, in, the, in the causal planets. What kind of ocean is the cosmic ocean? These are the issues on which knowledge is exchanged and there are clashes. There are some inhabitants there who know more than the others or they try to correct each other as we do on earth. There are many debates between religions. There too they have debates. But all the conflict is knowledge based and non-violent, non-physically non violent. Even the astral bodies which are certain to us when we are on earth is the actual body there. But even there there is no body to body conflict. It is mental vibration to mental vibration, mind to mind. Okay, now, just as we have teachers on earth, we have teachers even on the astral planets who teach the inhabitants there how to rise higher and higher in the astral world. Do we die? Do inhabitants on astral planets die? Yes, they also die. But they have a much longer lifespan than we have on Earth. The lifespan there is between 500 to 1000 years as per earthly calculations. But how does death come there? Death comes there again by will. You realize that it is time for you to die now. So you decide to die. And you are born again. The new astral body. But with a record of the progress you made in your previous life. And how are you born? You are not born from, from a womb. Because there is no such thing as male and female. As I said, if you want, you just become a female. I am male here. I would like to experience life as a female. So I become a female. And I said, no, okay, now let me, let me be a transvestite. And I live as a transvestite. So there is no such thing as male or female there. 
we are born again by energy vibrations. We decide to die, enough we had, now we have a new body and we again decide to be born. So just as we transmigrate on earth or on the gross planets through 8.4 million species of life, we transmigrate there in the astral planets from level to level. I don't know how many levels are there. So that's how life on the astral planets continues and continues to evolve till you reach the highest astral planet. And the highest astral planet is called Hiranyalok in Sanskrit. In Hiranyalok, the final astral planet, you get high quality teachers who train you to even shed whatever remains of your astral karma and go to the causal world. The same cycle is repeated in the causal world. There are levels and then there are causal desires. It is the same as on astral uh, planets but even more refined, even more surreal. So you see, as we move from the earth to the astral planets, to the causal planets, everything becomes more and more subtle. And the essence remains the same. And a time comes when we have shed all our causal desires too. So 100% of the cosmic energy is released. That means we don't even need the causal body anymore. That molecule, cosmic molecule, which we call spirit soul, or just spirit, or just soul, Jivatma, we call it in Sanskrit, is released from the bondage of the bodies. And it merges with the cosmic ocean. It has returned home. It has returned to Godhead. That's a very brief and a very rough description of the journey of the soul from the time it is projected from the cosmic ocean to the time it returns to the cosmic ocean. But we hear of heavens and hells. The Abrahamic faiths tell us that heaven and hell are everlasting. Hinduism says no. But what exactly are these heavens and hells? Where are the heavens? What are the heavens? Where are the hells? What are the hells? This shall be our topic of the next video. Thank you.